Hello everyone, welcome back to the Capablanca saga. We are back at the 1911 tournament uh, in San, Seb uh, San Sebastian uh, and we have a game between Aron Nimzovic and Jose Roll Capablanca. This is a game from round 8. In round 7 Capablanca faced uh, Aldrich Duras and uh, that game ended in a draw. I decided not to show it. It's a really short game. Uh, some pieces got exchanged and a draw was agreed upon but I will put it in the description below. It will be the first... Uh, uh, thing you will see so just click on it if you want to check that uh, game out as well uh, But uh, this is round eight and uh, I don't know if you remember but in round one uh, when Capablanca played against Ose Bernstein um, uh, Bernstein said uh, alongside Aron Nimzovic that Capablanca should not uh, Be allowed to participate in this tournament as he didn't win any major tournament uh, So as Capablanca did beat Ose Bernstein in round one uh, it would be you know it would pretty much shut everyone up if he just uh, went and beat Nimzovic also. Uh, but as you remember, uh, Nimzovic also objected to Capablanca uh, commenting on his uh, Blitz games. So then Capablanca challenged him to a series of speed games and then easily beat Aaron Nimzovic. Uh, but this is classical chess, so uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, a little bit different. And I also have a question for you. Uh, throughout their lives, uh, Aaron Nimzovic and Jose Rul Capablanca have played 11 games. Uh, in total, so what do you think the end result was? Uh, we're gonna return to this uh, after the game, but you know, something to, th to think about. Uh, so let's uh, check out the game. Nimzovic uh, opens with e4, uh, we have e6, d3, and d5, and it goes without saying that this is the first encounter of these two legends. Uh, so uh, we have the French defense on the board, knight to d2, and now c5. Uh, Capablanca was always a big fan of this c5 move. Uh, like Philidor long, uh, long ago uh, always said that you should always move uh, the, the pawn in front of the bishop uh, before developing your knight, so uh, as the pawn will not block, uh, the knight will not block the development of the pawn. Uh, knight to g2 f3, uh, we have knight to c6 by Capablanca, bishop to e2, and now bishop to d6, just developing. Uh, we have castles, queen c7 by Capablanca, pressuring the h2 pawn, uh, rook to e1, and now knight g to e7. <clears throat> uh, we have c3, uh, Capablanca castles, and now a3. Uh, we have f5 by, Cap by Capablanca hitting that center, uh, and now bishop to f1. Uh, you have to decide what to do here. You don't really gain anything by capturing anything. You cannot push as the e5 square is protected three times by Capablanca. So here bishop to f1, waiting to see what black will do. And uh, here black can capture, for example, he can go pawn captures on e4, d captures and then push c4, and black has a very nice position. Uh, white doesn't really have all that many uh, choices on how to develop. But Capablanca finds a useful move, bishop to d7, uh, develops a piece, uh, connects his rooks, and also uh, waits to see what uh, Nimzovic will do. And here, there uh, isn't all that much you can do here. You have to try something. Uh, so e captures on d5. Uh, on d5 was played. Uh, h3 is also a possibility, but uh, if h3, then most likely Capablanca would go into that. Uh, captures, captures, and c4. Uh, but here we have e captures on d5, we have e captures on d5, and now b4. Uh, here, uh, expanding on the queen side, Capablanca ignores this and goes rook a to e8, developing his rook, and now bishop to b2. Uh, we have b6, strengthening c5, uh, and now comes d4. Uh, Nimzovic would very much like if uh, everything here would just get exchanged and uh, this dark square bishop would come alive, but Capablanca does not allow that. He plays c4, and here we have a very interesting moment in the game. Uh, you see Capablanca's position, he has two very nice rooks, the bishops are very nicely placed, the knights are perfectly fine, and the queen and bishop are nicely eyeing that h2 pawn, whereas you have Nimzovic's bishop on b2, uh, is really doing nothing. So how do you develop here? Uh, uh, it's not all that uh, easy to decide. For example, you could try to get this knight into the game, let's say bishop e2, but you already played bishop from e2 to f1. So this would be like admitting you made a poor choice. But even doing this, let's say a5, uh, let's say knight to f1, you try to develop this way, a4, black grabs even more space and stifles your position even more. Uh, of course, you cannot capture due to this, uh, uh, well, n discovery. Uh, and after knight to g3, black can even just push you back, and there's really nothing for white to look for here. 
uh, you can just see how much uh, squares uh, just just the black pawns are controlling in white's camp uh, so here after this c4 move by Capablanca Nimsovic uh, made a very uh, concrete decision he decided to give up a piece for two pawns and a very nice attack so he played knight captures on c4 and okay uh, you do have to capture it it is the best move we have d captures on c4 and now bishop captures on c4 so giving up the knight for two pawns this also comes with check uh, Capablanca goes king to h8 and now comes knight to g5 and now there are there are some threats here knight f7 check of course would uh, win you the rook uh, queen h5 uh, is an idea threatening checkmate on h7 so the position is not without poison and here Capablanca has to make a decision uh, does he want to uh, capture on h2 with check and uh, see what happens there or does he want to uh, guard f7 by knight to d8 uh, knight to d8 is possible, so yes, now you control uh, the f7 square, but after queen h5, uh, white now controls the f7 square three times, and you're also uh, threatening checkmate, so you do have to do something about that. Uh, after you block with h6, now, uh, well, you get a couple of... Uh, uh, you could try a couple of things here, for example, bishop to f7 will win you some material. Uh, for example, after knight captures, knight captures with check, uh, but uh, now black will not capture, black will just play king g8, and there's no good way to continue your attack here. The knight is attacked twice, there's no good retreat square for the knight, you would have to capture here, and after queen captures, black defended, uh, black is up material, and black will be winning this game. Uh, on the other hand, after queen to h, uh, queen to h5, after h6, you could try bishop to b3. The knight is pinned, so there is no worry about uh, it being captured. But what white would want to do is play c4, d5, and make this bishop come alive. After this bishop comes alive, then ideas like queen captures on h6 become possible. So let's see, uh, if here, for example, knight g8, uh, you could go c4, preparing d5, uh, and after knight to f6, kicking the queen back, queen to h4, now black also has to make a move, let's say knight e4, uh, now you try d5, and here it is a very dangerous position, uh, for example if you capture here then it's just queen captures on h6, uh, straight out checkmate, whether you go to g8 or block, queen will just capture on g7, you are getting checkmated here, uh, but uh, again after d5 if you try uh, something like king to g8 then black will be alright. Uh, now you are no longer threatening any queen captures on h6 ideas, and now after captures, 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 and captures, uh, it will just be a better position for black. After black captures here, you can go king h1, bishop goes back, and there aren't really any dangers here for black. But that's a lot of moves you have to consider, and you have to calculate a lot here. And as you all know, Capablanca was a bit lazy when it came to calculations. If he found a different idea, he decided not to calculate. So here he went for a different plan. First, bishop captures on h2. Uh, not bothering himself with this knight to f7 check. Uh, we have king to h1, and now bishop back to f4, uh, attacking the knight, forcing the knight to, to deliver this check. So, okay, knight to f7 check, now you have to capture. Uh, if, uh, you go, if you go king to g8, then queen to h5 will be very strong, also the knight gets defended. So, we have rook captures, bishop captures, and now rook to f8, attacking the bishop. Uh, we have bishop back to h5, and now comes knight to g8. Uh, c4, Nimzo wants to get this bishop to come alive, queen to d8, uh, and now, if you start with d5 immediately, then queen to h4 check will be deadly. Uh, for example, king g1, queen h2 check, king f1, queen h1 check, king moves, and now the queen no longer guards the bishop on h5. Queen captures, and after king d3, uh, black is just up in material, and, well, white has a king on d3. Uh, so, of course, it would be winning for black. Uh, so, after queen to d8, you can't uh, go for d5 immediately. First, queen to f3. Uh, you will always have the opportunity of going queen to h3 to block this check. Uh, Capablanca delivers it immediately, we have queen to h4, and now again you have to block. If you go king g1, then queen to h2 check, king f1, and now, <clears throat> uh, a very nice idea, knight to f6 check, <laughs> not check, but uh, knight to f6 will trap the bishop. The g4 square is covered by the pawn, and also the bishop is now attacked twice. So here, after d5, attacking the knight and also the attacker of the bishop, that is the knight on f6, uh, you could go knight e5, block the bishop, but after queen to h3, uh, queen captures, g captures, now you play knight captures on c4, and now the bishop on b2 is under attack, and also the bishop on h5 is under attack. Uh, you will have to eliminate this attacker, bishop captures, but now knight d2 check, king moves, and after g captures, uh, you will have this position where 
uh, white is black is just controlling a lot of squares around the white king. Uh, Capablanca still has uh, two pieces for the rook. Rook g8 is coming. Uh, black will be winning this position. Uh, so after queen to h4 check, Nimzovic decides to block immediately. Queen to h3 and now comes knight c to e7. Uh, sorry, first queen captures on f2, uh, grabbing the pawn and also attacking the bishop here. Uh, so you do have to block this. Rook to e2, this is the best idea. Uh, queen to g3, now forcing a queen trade. Uh, queen captures, bishop captures, and now comes c5. d5 also seems like a reasonable idea, uh, but Nimzovic has a very concrete plan. He wants to have this diagonal uh, open for his light square bishop. Uh, we have c5, and now knight c to e7. Uh, bishop to f3 by Nimzovic. Now the bishop will be very useful on light squares. <coughs> Uh, for when Nimzovic uh, starts pushing his past pawns. Uh, but now comes bishop to b5, uh, attacking Nimzovic's rook here. Uh, we have rook to c2, and now comes knight to f6. Uh, so you can see how the knights are very useful in controlling the light squares here. The, these two knights control this square, so you cannot push it. The knight and bishop control this square. So uh, a lot of useful uh, pieces placements. Uh, we have a4 by Nimzovic attacking Capablanca's bishop here. We have bishop to d3 attacking the rook. And now uh, it's uh, very hard to decide what to do with the rook. Uh, rook c3, rook d2 will all come in range of this, this knight jumping to e4. So here Nimzovic tried rook to c1, but uh, it's, uh, it's no better. Uh, we have knight to e4, now threatening uh, a lot of very nasty ideas, but uh, the biggest one is... Uh, I can tell you the biggest one because I'm leaving that for the challenge. But let's say here uh, you decide to create a passed A pawn. For example, you play something like C captures. Uh, it doesn't work because of rook to F6. Now rook to H6 will be uh, a huge threat. And now if you play something like bishop captures, you get bishop captures. And uh, now whatever you play, rook A3, rook to H6 will be deadly. Let's say king G1, bishop H2 check, king F2. Uh, now rook captures on b6, and uh, you are still down in material, and black is black is just winning this position. Uh, your b pawn is under attack after b5, even rook to g6 is an idea threatening g2. So black is just all over the place. Uh, but after this knight to e4, uh, Nimzovic did not uh, go for this idea, rather he played b5. He wanted to create a passed c pawn, uh, but here... Uh, he runs into a forced mate in five. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move Capablanca played. Uh, or perhaps he didn't play it, but still, uh, you know, feel free to find it. Uh, uh, feel free to pause the video. I will give you a couple of seconds as usual. <clears throat> uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, for Especially for those of you who found the entire sequence. Uh, but uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the, the idea is rook to f6. This is what Capablanca played, and now everything becomes obvious. Uh, Nimzovic played bishop captures on e4, and here, uh, if you took this uh, bishop captures on e4 into consideration and found even the next move, then really, congratulations, you are truly awesome. Uh, but uh, if not, feel free to pause the video here again and try to find the, the forcing line for black here. It's really... They're really nice, so you'll you'll you know f feel great. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations! Uh, the move is bishop to f2. Now you simply block g g1, uh, and there is no defense against rook to h6. For example, if you capture, then rook to h6 is checkmate in one. Uh, and if you don't capture, if you try and uh, give your king some room, for example, g3 or g4 doesn't really matter. Just bishop captures. Still, the two bishops now create a wall. King has to go to h2. And again, rook to h6 is checkmate. So it's very interesting here after this rook to f6 move. Uh, you can see where all of Nimzovic's pieces are placed. The, the rook on c1, rook on a1, bishop on b2. None of them really having anything to do with the game. After rook to f6, there is no defense. And, uh, uh, well, Capablanca shows Nimzovic that the game is actually being played on the king side, not on the queen side. And uh, for those of you who remember the question from the beginning of the video, uh, I said that Capablanca and Nimzovic played uh, 11 games throughout their lives. Uh, what was the result? Uh, so I, I'm, I don't know uh, what you thought the result was. Uh, but after those 11 games, uh, six of the games were drawn. Uh, Nimzovic won zero games and five games were won by Capablanca. So quite an impressive result against a player like Aron Nimzovic. Uh, truly impressive. 
Uh, but yeah, Nimzovic never was able to won, uh, to win a single game against Jose Ruel Capablanca. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is round eight uh, of the two th- of the nineteen eleven tournament in San Sebastian. Uh, Capablanca still without a loss, uh, and it's uh, going to be very interesting to see how the, uh, how this uh, whole thing will uh, turn out, and uh, you know <coughs> where where we're gonna uh, be going with this whole Capablanca saga. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying uh, my uh, well so far coverage of the Capablanca saga. I would like to thank uh, Sjors Dodens, uh, Alex Minders, uh, Jens uh, Federer, uh, Kenneth Serda, and Theo Drivas for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting videos. I'm uh, going to be checking up on, um, well, Gibraltar Chess Festival, and also uh, do, su- do hashtag suggest some crumbling games. I still haven't decided on the one that we are going to show. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.